In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to modify parts in Prusa Slicer. That includes reorienting, scaling, and adding modifiers such as holes so you can make it into a keyring or necklace. Right here, I have a Transformers logo that I found on Thingiverse. I'm going to take and orbit around using the left mouse button and dragging. I can look around at him. I can also move by right-clicking and dragging. Let me pan. And finally, I can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. So I want to change how he's oriented because this would not be a good rotation for printing. So our first step is we're going to take and select the object. It's going to turn green. So I'm bring up some information about the size and location. And I'm going to take and go to the place on face tool. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select any flat face. In this case, I want the back face. So now I'm in a good orientation for printing. Now, if I select him again, I can look at him and he's kind of big. He's 82 by 79 millimeters. That's roughly uh, three and a half inches by three inches. And that's really not great for uh, key rings or necklaces. So I'm going to take and scale him down to a more reasonable size. And the best way to think about millimeters going to inches is that one inch is 25 millimeters or four inches is 100 millimeters. So I'd like this to be about two inches. So I'm going to force the big side to or the small side to two inches. By that, I'm going to select the Y. I could scale this automatically by selecting the scale tool and grabbing a corner and zooming it in and out and trying to watch. Or I can manually select the field and set the field to exactly 50. Now, that looks good, but it's only three millimeters thick. It's a little bit thin and it's liable to break. So I'm going to scale just the Z axis. So again, I'm selected. I'm going to hit scale. I'm going to go to the vertical bars. I'm going to pull this up to it says about five millimeters. I could. Uh, try to change it, but I found that pulling the handlebar works best and watching the number in the right-hand side change. So 5.12, that's close enough. It does move in both directions, but when you let go, it'll shoot up on top of the plate. So now I have my Transformer logos. It looks pretty good. I'm now going to go over to my preview and take a look at it. Looks good. Print time's kind of long. It's good at 30 minutes. That's because I'm running at low quality. I don't really need a higher quality. I'm also going to look down and see what the infill looks like. That looks pretty good. That's set 50%. The default is 20, and let's take a look at that. And that's really kind of broad. It's not really good because it might break. So I'm going to hit 50 to give it some more heft and make it a little stronger. So I now have my basic shape. It looks pretty good. Now let's make this into a key ring. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back to my model, view, my 3D view, and I'm going to right-click. And add a cylinder modifier. So I'm going to go to add modifier, cylinder. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to bring it over kind of the right spot. So I'm just going to click on it. And I can drag it or I can select the move button and drag it. Still kind of big. So I'm going to resize this to be about 10, 11 millimeters, just under a quarter inch. So let's do 10 millimeters because that looks good. And then if I look at it, which we did, I've orbited around. And you notice it's floating above, so it's not actually intersecting. The best way to move to this is I click on him and set the Z to zero. And it disappeared. Oh, I set the size to zero. That would cause a problem. I'm going to set this back to eight and these back to 10. And I'm going to set the Z height to zero. It's very easy to hit the wrong thing when you're working on these this spread. Not a huge deal. It's easy to fix always. So now I need to reorient it. First thing I do is I want to make sure it's centered. The coordinates here are in reference to the Transformers logo that it's uh, joined to. So what I'm going to do is set its X position to zero. That's going to center it. I'm then going to move it up some. And the best way to do that is grab it. Select the move and then just grab the Y arrow and move it till it looks kind of good. And now if I go to my 3D view, nothing's happened. And that's because I haven't told it what to do with that cylinder yet. So I'm going to click on the cylinder and I'm going to right click on the gear and we're going to change its infill and layers to zero. So its infill is going to be 0%. And I right click again, go to layers perimeters and I'm going to set everything to zero. Layer height should be still stay uh, 0.3, but everything else should be zero. And all of a sudden, I now have a hole. 
No, looking at that, I kind of want that higher. It looks kind of weird. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna go select the move button and I'm going to then grab the arrow and just move it up a little bit. I'm gonna orbit so I can see, make sure it looks good. Go back to my 3D view and that looks much better. These two straight lines are intact and it looks really nice. I'm pretty much ready, except I also want this to be a two color print. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this slider, the layer slider and bring it all the way down to the point where that top just starts drawing. So not there, but there, it's my first layer. We hit the plus button, that will insert a pause. Now when filling out the form, I'm gonna select multicolor print with one nozzle and with pause printing. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna label, write the colors you want in the order you wanna start with. So if this was gonna be black with red face, I'd start with black and do black comma shiny red. And that would mean the background would be black and the face would be red. If I put it in the wrong order, the background would be shiny red and the face would be black. I can export that G code and we're all set. Let me know if you have any questions.